You've heard me say it a few times now at this point. The DGen Ape Academy is building. But it's one thing to talk the talk. It's an entirely different thing to walk the walk. What specifically are they building? How are they building it? When are they building it? And why did I feel so inspired by all of this to dress up in a leopard print outfit and show my junk off to the entire world earlier this week? That's what this video is going to be all about. Now, it's one thing to hear my point of view and my thoughts on what's going on with the DJ Ape Academy. It's an entirely different thing when I sit down and have a conversation with members of that entire organization uh, about their perspectives, about what's going on behind the scenes. So today I am sitting down with a couple members from the Student Council of the Dow. That's St. Eclectic, who I've spoken with in the past, as well as DGen Service. This is going to be a really fun conversation. If you're curious about why I think the DGen Ape Academy is going to be number one, it's going to be an internationally recognized brand, and it's going to produce a tremendous amount of value and community for the holders and the community members. So if you want to know why I think the DGen Apes or the DGen Trash Pandas being a part of the DGeniverse is something that you need to do, just listen in on this interview and try and digest what's really happening behind the scenes here. Now, of course, nothing in this video should be considered financial advice. Uh, none of us are financial advisors in any form of capacity. We're just a bunch of friends who are getting together to talk about something that we're really passionate about. So keep in mind that investing is always risky and you should do your own research and do what's best for you in your situation. So with that being said, let's get going. Talking with St. Eclectic and DGen Service. I'll see you there. All right, I am sitting down yet again with some members of the DGen Ape Academy, some very important people, people that I'm really excited to talk about. Um, and I'm going to tell you why I'm excited to talk to them right, well, in just a minute. But first, I want you to get to know them a little bit. You should already know St. Eclectic a little bit because I know you avidly follow my content and you watch the interview that I did with them. But I want you to get to know DGen Service a little bit. Uh, so, DGen, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background. What's your role uh, within the DGen Ape Academy and why do you feel the way you feel about it? <laughs> All right. Well, hello, guys. I'm DGen Service. I uh, minted, you know, DGen Apes, and uh, I started off this whole thing with uh, creating McDegen Apes Twitter um, because I really liked the DGen Service Apes and how they looked. Uh, from there, I basically uh, campaigned for council, made it onto council, and then when we did this whole shift for DGen DAO, um, I was handed over the keys so that I could, you know, structure the DAO out how we wanted to. And uh, honestly, this whole ride has been awesome this entire time. I've just really been doing all of this for fun because I do it on, on my free time. And uh, yeah, I'm proud to call myself an ape. <laughs> That's nice. So in, in the McDegen restaurant, are you the manager? Yeah, so the joke was, um, I'm the Mick manager. <laughs> so, so Monolith works for you, because he's a Mick DJ, right? I <laughs> guess technically, I, you know, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, I guess technically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, Saint. So, uh, again, give give the audience a little refresher as to who you are and what you're about. Hey guys, so uh, DJ Apes was one of the first projects that I minted. Um, and over time, I've uh, got really interested in the Solano ecosystem uh, with all the NFTs out there and started writing threads uh, to educate people because I really am very passionate about the uh, ecosystem and just love it. And along the way, uh, got into more DGen Apes, ended up being on the council with uh, my fellow over there, DGen Service. And then, you know, in the in recent times, uh, other than sort of coming onto your show and explaining to people what the apes are all about and the Solana NFT ecosystem, uh, also started putting together the formings of a DAO of the of the DGen DAO, 
Uh, and that's something that sort of was all, always there, but could have utilized a bit more community interaction. So DGEN Service and I put together a plan into action, um, and then we kicked it off, and we've been going pretty strong for the last eight days. So that's that's been fantastic. Community response has been great. So that's a little bit about me. So that's that's kind of one of the bits. There's really three things that I want to talk about today with you guys, and the DAO is going to be one of those things. So there was a period of time after the mint where it was strictly the dev team then there's was this kind of transitionary period which i think we may still be in a little bit where there was a formation of a dao but it was primarily for a, a handful of members who were elected by the community and they kind of serve as middlemen between the dev team and the community but the last time you were on my show uh if we want to call it a show the last time you were on my channel you were talking about this brand new thing called the DAO, where it's a new Discord, everybody can join in, and now it's going to be very, very uh, community-first, community-centric. So that's been about eight days at this point. Tell me, what are both of your thoughts right now on how that's been going for the last eight days? Because I have some very strong thoughts about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to preface what you said, you know, previously it was mostly dev team run. And then we elected sort of 13 apes to represent the people, if you will. And I think what we realized quickly was that, you know, 13 apes is, is only still 13 apes. And we're much better off uh, with more of the community getting involved. And so this plan for the DAO was hatched, right? And what that means was migrating to a server, as you said, but also putting the responsibility uh, in the community's hands and saying, hey, if you want to do something, you can go out and do it, right? Let's do it together. We'll vote on it. Um, you know, if you want to do something for charity, if we want to do something to support the Solana ecosystem, if we want to do something to, you know, support other projects uh, and be set the example for what a project community should be, we should go and do that. And it's been fantastic because, you know, we took a bit, a bit of a risk doing this because we needed to move servers um, to make sure that we had our own autonomy. And literally in eight days, we've gone from zero to, to a thousand people. Uh, so, you know, how, how do you think about it, DGEN service? It's been a whirlwind. It, it really has. And, you know, an interesting, interesting fact is the Discord server that Dijon DAO is, you know, is currently on, was actually originally the Discord that was made for the council members to talk with the dev team. And then that was then restructured into what we have today, which is um, it, with, with everything that we have set up. And yeah, it, it's definitely been a whirlwind. Um, I started setting things up, me and Saint, you know, worked together to kind of like really hash out what will people want? What do people want and what what DAO experience can we bring that sets us apart from the rest? So that's kind yeah. of my focus. Yeah, I mean, I, I think also, you know, the DAA team did a fantastic job of setting up their own server, but, you know, it just needed to grow and have a little bit more um, exciting things. And so, you know, the last time I was on your show, Knox, I might have said that uh, the vision is to create a landing pad where everyone can come in, concentrate all the apes into one chat room or two chat rooms. Um, get them to cross-pollinate ideas and start meeting their fellow ape. Uh, and then from there, who knows what happens, right? Now, I, and... I, I want to interject right there because there's some very important language that you're using right now. And you're saying you want a landing pad for apes to get to know their fellow apes and work together with apes. Where Where do the raccoons fit in? That's a very good question. So, you know, the raccoons are another project uh, that are in the same Degeniverse. And the idea is that when the game comes forward, we will be able to work together as apes and raccoons together, right? Good. So there will be some teamwork involved, right? Yes. But they are for all intents and purposes a separate project in the sense um, that, you know, they have their own identity um, and it's a different set of uh, sort of tokens and metadata that exist within them. Right. Good. But at the end of the day, we are still friends, as they say. And in my view, I think that, you know, there is great opportunity for us to actually work together and potentially even be situated in the same sort of uh, DAO or server together. Um, there's been a lot of thinking about that already. Um, and that's something that uh, we have a bit of a future vision for. Uh -huh. But what I will also say 
is that with a, with every new NFT project uh, and their community, it needs a little bit of time to settle down, yep. right? Uh, Pandas haven't even sort of uh, minted yet. And I kind of feel like, you know, maybe it's a couple of weeks, might be longer, might be shorter, uh, just for the community to settle down, just for people to get used to it. Uh, but then, you know, there's a chance that we could sort of come together. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, and I think it's really good that you're not rushing into it, so to speak. But it's also good that you've thought about it and you have a vision uh, for where that could go or and how we will collaborate together. Because like you said, we are all part of the same universe. We're, we are all part, we are all DGENs, right? The the, the acronym <laughs> or, or, or the actual the adjective that's used to describe these apes or these trash pandas is DGEN apes and DGEN trash pandas. So it's cool to know that we are all one big family. We are all one, you know, set of friends. Uh, but instead of just like opening the floodgates, you know, let's let's let things settle down and acclimate them to this environment uh, and, and kind of plan out how that's going to go from here. I think that's a really smart idea. Yeah, we, um, <laughs> me and Saint, I can't tell you how many times we talk about hypotheticals and how many, how much time we actually spend sitting down and war gaming everything. You know, mm -hmm. okay, if we do this, uh, people could say that, people could say that, people yep. could react this way, they could react that way. What are the pros and cons to this? You know, and then we kind of like branch it out to a smaller group of apes. Okay, guys, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And then we start you know, implementing it everywhere. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean, that's what you have to do, right? Because everybody here is trying to build a brand. Even interestingly enough, the brand that I think the three of us are really focused in on right now isn't necessarily the DGEN Ape Academy brand, but more the DGEN DAO brand, uh, which is, which is a, a kind of an interesting take when you start to think about this as either a subunit of the DGEN Ape Academy. Again, I think it's all kind of the same DGENiverse, but this is now the community uh, being in large part responsible for this project. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it was very deliberate when we sort of thought about the name of it. It could have been DGEN Ape DAO or Ape DAO, but in knowing that there was the Trash Panda launch coming, I think it just made more sense that it be DGEN DAO, uh, or all of us did actually. Um, and, and also it's the, the brand, right? DGEN is the, is, is the, the, the sort of um, theme that sort of sit, fits the NFTs. I mean, what I might do, Knox, is, is, is just share with you a little bit of thoughts, right? These are all preliminary thoughts, you know, but can you imagine a, a situation um, because inclusion is very important and, and I feel that inclusion is the name of the game mm -hmm. uh, and that the larger your community is, the more you can do with it, mm -hmm. right? And sort of my my thoughts are like, wow, imagine a server where, you know, obviously you have the, the DGN apes, the gated stuff, right? Which you can only access if you have a DGN ape uh, NFT. But then what if there's a special section for, let's say, the pandas, you know, to, to create their own little chat and their own little panda only stuff? Uh, and then the third thing is you, maybe you even have a mixing zone, right? Where pandas and apes can just hang out in a chat room, get to know each other. Uh, and even cross-pollinate ideas like, hey, what if we did Panda and, uh, and Ape memes, Panda and Ape merch, Panda and Ape initiatives for charity? Um, you know, that, that to me is something that at least would be a, a really interesting way to start the relationship. Yeah. I also, you know, just hearing you talk about this immediately, what my head went to was like friendly competition. Like, let's see if apes or pandas can raise more money for the DAO by selling Girl Scout cookies. Like, I, I could just see stuff like that happening, and I would dress up like a Girl Scout and go stand out in front of that, that grocery store again uh, trying to sell Thin Mints, because uh, I think that would be... I, I think I'd probably get arrested, honestly, but I think that would be fun. Um, and, and I could see stuff like that happening, too. Um, so, you know, kind of like I, I just see... Now I'm just starting to envision things, like, oh, well, maybe there will be a channel dedicated to, like... You know the thermometer chart where who's filling up the thermometer the fastest uh, you know <laughs> yeah you, you already see it with the gaming channel i think we have a scavenging hunt channel inside the 
DJ and Trash Panda uh, Discord, and that's a lot of fun where people can work together and rob each other and mm -hmm. you know play a little Discord game. I, I think the the one thing I'll say, and sorry, DJ and Service, I cut you off there, but I just just very quickly, one of the really cool things is that there are a lot of new people entering the DJ universe through DTP, mm -hmm. and one of the nicest things I've heard is some of them say, "Hey, we really want to work our way up to an ape." eventually yep. and join the community and what better way to do that than to have like you know uh, one area where you can mingle so so i mean that was just the initial thought you know it's not a it's nothing set in stone but it's just a vision that some of us have i, I can't tell you how many comments i've gotten i retweeted one yesterday because it really hit home but they're all to the same effect like hey i was priced out of apes but this dtp launch uh you know let me get in some people minted for point one, which we're going to talk about a lot coming up we're not there yet uh, and some people are buying them off of secondary for three or four or five soul. Um, I bought a bunch in the 3.6 to the 3.9 range, but, you know, four soul is still a great entry point for the Degeniverse, in my opinion, not financial advice, do your own research. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, <clears throat> I think it's like, like, Saint, like Saint said, it's about inclusion. And, you know, what better way to get, you know, fresh people into the degeneverse and what better way to onboard people you know and it's a great it's a great thing that people are starting to see you know apes as something to aspire to yeah right because we honestly one thing that i've always loved is just leading by inspiration you know working so hard and making things so efficient and bringing things to people fast uh -huh. so much so that everyone says whoa look at look at what he's doing yep. you know look look at all look how fast they're iterating these things how, how can i help yep oh man you should see dgen service like working on the discord server seriously like you know i i'm not very technical but um you know he uh, i ask him something and it's done or he's already thought of a certain way to structure a channel you know we're bouncing ideas and literally in in eight days to get to a thousand members joining a lot of them new as well um it, it show it's a testament to you know like uh the the, the server being set up well right so I want to dwell on on that exact thing especially the the key words that you just said there DGen service. Mm -hmm. it, I think the biggest word that you just said in that last set of sentences was fast. I'm the type of person who wants less talk, more action. Everybody can come up with ideas and spit all ideas in a Discord channel, but it takes some real, some real stones for someone to take that and go out into the world and do something about it. We, we've got a lot going on in the Dow right now, I, you know, I could dwell on this all day where recently I tweeted that uh, I have never, I, it's been a long, long time, years, maybe even decades since I felt at home in a community. Um, you know, not that I'm like a loner or anything. I've got my friends and everything like that. But uh, in a digital community, uh, it's been a long time since I felt like I could really, really, really be myself. Um yeah, somebody described it as like the DJ and Dow is really just a bunch of men being dudes. Uh, and I, I really like that. So the thing about it that impresses me the most is I can come in, immediately find bonds with people from similar walks of life, with similar interests, but also take my skills and put them to work doing stuff. There's a section in the DJ and Dow where it's like, Basically, it's a post with emoji reactions at the bottom, and it says, hey, if you're interested in picking up some work to do with this thing, react with this emoji below, and then it unlocks a private channel for you. Tell me more about what's going on with that. How is that working? How has the reception been to these different initiatives? And what is really going on behind the scenes? Peel the curtain away. Yeah. Um, so basically, <clears throat> me and Saint, um, when we were kind of wargaming how we were going to set up the DAO, we kind of had this realization. There are different types of apes, right? There's the apes who just want to come into the Discord and just have a place to chill, right? That's all they want. And that's 100% okay and awesome. Come chill, right? But at the same time, there are other apes who from the very beginning, even even just after Mint, we're already asking the question, how can I help? 
right? How can I get involved? Hey, um, I can make this meme. Oh, hey, I have experience doing a website. Oh, hey, I have this contact that can help apes, you know, get to this place, right? And so when we first started the DAO, we wanted it to have a basic launching, like a basic main chat where people would come in and just kind of talk. And then we'd kind of get the sense of what people really wanted, right? And so initially, I set up this uh, DAO initiatives category. And basically what it is, is self-assignable roles um, where, for example, we have one through eight. And we have number one is content for memes, videos, music, right? Anything having to do with content. Number two, governance and proposal drafting. Number three, marketing. Number four, collaborations and giveaways. Number five, community and Discord management. Six, DJ and DAO funding initiatives. Number seven, DJ and DAO website onboarding materials. And number eight, unofficial merch or DAO merch, right? And so when you go into the Discord and you go into this roles channel, what you'll see is those numbered out and then emojis underneath corresponding to those numbers. And when you click, for example, on number one for content, when you click that emoji reaction that says number one, basically what happens is the bot that <laughs> the bot that I set up, which I funny, funny enough, I called it Ape AI, right? I just I had to stay on brand. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so when you click on that number one, the bot set, um, assigns you a, that role. And when you have that role assigned to you, then that um, channel is now visible to you and you can access it. As well as being able to be tagged under that role. So that if someone says, hey, you know, tag content members. Hey guys, I have this new idea about this new thing. Who can help, right? And so basically that's kind of what we what we wanted to set up and now what interestingly enough what's happened is that now we've just opened up the entire initiatives channel because we've had so many members come in and say hey how can i help out and then saint has you know been having to tell people like you know 20 times a day oh go to the roles click on this mm -hmm. yeah know? oh my god i was <laughs> i was so sick of doing that <laughs> exactly but see this is this is this is important because a lot of a lot of people, a lot of teams, you know, don't. You got to stay light on your feet, and when people speak out about something, you have to iterate fast, right? And so, basically, what what I've what we just did a few days ago, I just opened it all up. Everyone can see all the initiatives now, mm -hmm. right? People are still people people still have their roles, so people can still get tagged you know, under that specific uh, role that they've assigned themselves of their specific interests for each initiative, right? But now everyone can see the entire initiatives channel mm -hmm. so that if so that so that it's easily accessible, because we got the feedback, hey, you know, everyone wants to see this, everyone wants to contribute. Perfect. We'll open it all up. Yep. And, and it's been crazy, Knox, like, I mean, the the amount of contribute contribution that's happened already right? Like we've, we've got like four or five, six, maybe even seven people working on merch, um, sharing ideas on how it could be drop shipped, how it could be fulfilled, uh, and, and what designs that we would put out there. Uh, you know, we've got multiple people reaching out about how to market the apes better. Um, in actual fact, we might even get something a little special uh, in, in Hong Kong soon. I won't put any more hints out there, but that that's one hint. Uh, and you've even got you know, people looking into governance uh, issues as well. Like, you know, how do we set up the voting? You know, is there a system that we can use? But the one that, you know, has taken the most work and, and the one that is really impressive is the collaborations and partnerships. Because, you know, every day you get a project coming to DGEN service or I saying, hey, can we collaborate? Can we do a giveaway for your apes? Can we do a whitelist? And it's very important that we discern what are the good projects uh, and what are the bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you know, what can we what can we give away? Because at the end of the day, if we give things to apes and if we give whitelists, it can be sometimes wrongly seen as an endorsement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we just want to give stuff to our apes. That's the whole point. You know, you get an ape, you get these privileges, but we, we need people to look at them, vet them, provide their input uh, and then also blast it out. And that's actually a lot of work across, yep. you know, multiple projects. So we've had like six or seven people step up to help out and instantly the workload for, for service and I um, gets freed up so that we can focus on, on some other things.
Yeah, I mean, and, and this is, I guess where I was going with this is this has probably been one of the most impressive things that I've seen. And I circle back to the word to the word that DJ used, fast. We're talking eight days of existence and the mobilization of human capital to grow the DAO, to grow the brand, to grow the DGen Ape Academy has been phenomenal. I'm involved in, in most of these channels and most of these initiatives. I try to contribute to them at least once a day. Uh, I throw out an idea and within 24 to 48 hours, we've got quotes. You know what I mean? Like that's, <laughs> that's a big deal that uh, people are like, like, I've got the time. I'm going to go reach out to the correct parties to find out how we're going to do this. And we're going to strategize a plan on how to get it done. And uh, that that's the thing is I don't like the nonsense so much. I would rather walk the walk than talk the talk. And that has been arguably one of the most impressive things that I've seen about this DAO. It's how much is actually getting done behind the scenes that nobody outside of the DAO really knows about. It's it's impressive the amount of building that's taking place. You know, it, it makes me really happy you say that because my, my first experience with kind of managing a Discord server was when I made the uh, dis private Discord server for the DGen service apes, right? And when I was doing that, um, my personal experience was uh, we all have real lives or IRL as you know we like to say right y'all have real lives um, <laughs> okay <laughs> but um but yeah we you know everyone has their own things that they have to do during the day and I realized my experience like in that server was oh at the end of the day I can you know sit down chill talk to people and maybe we can do stuff yep. right like kind of like have an impact and make memes and just have fun. And one thing that I, when we were talking, you know, me and Saint about how, how are we going to structure this DAO? What, what, what do, what do we want people's experience to be? And one point I brought up was I want people to be able to log on, contribute for an hour and then that's it. That's fine. You know, I, I want people to be able to log on, contribute for like one to two hours, bring up an idea. And tomorrow when they come back, they've already found that six or other seven apes ran with their idea and they're already on step three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And they come back in and say, OK, oh, wow, I'm glad you guys did that. Great. Now let me continue it. Yep. Right. And when you have people across different time zones doing that yep. and you organize it in an efficient way, you'd be surprised how fast things can go. Oh, it's it's amazing. It's I mean, if it's it's actually simple math. There's only 24 hours in a day. But if you have one percent of your community, this, you know, DJ Apes 10K collection, if 100 people contribute one hour, you know, that's 100 hours that just got worked on that day. So basically, you know, four times the amount of labor that's possible if you stayed awake 24 hours a day. Like, it's just extraordinary the amount of stuff that can get done with a small contribution from community, from a small number of community members. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I think it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, it's almost as if, uh, you know, it's, it, it's creating your own company almost, yeah. right? Um, but with a lot more of a heavy community emphasis uh, and everything that's done is to benefit the, the community. So I think it's a fascinating way to look at how resources get pulled together. I mean, you know, I've typically studied companies and, and investments and, you know, you look at it from a very corporate and incentivization point of view. Uh, and this is not that different, except the incentivization is very much the community and the people that are, are helping you and the people you are helping. Um, and that that's a different uh, way of thinking these days, mm -hmm. right? It's a more altruistic way of thinking. Of course, there's still benefits to us if you know the the value of apes uh, and our community grows, but it it to me it feels a lot more altruistic. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Totally, I, I couldn't agree more. So it's very impressive the things that are happening with the DAO. Now I think we need to pivot just a little bit and talk just a hair about the fair launch protocol and what happened with Bid Small. 
Oh, okay, so <laughs> I, I I might give a bit of a primer for this. So as you all know, the DGen Trash Panda launch happened recently, and that used this thing called the Fair Launch Protocol. Um, now in Solana, you know, all, all the infrastructure is kind of wild west with NFTs. It's so new, um, and most mints would basically click as fast as you can, uh, and then you either get the NFT or you miss out. Right. And people were botting this like crazy, managing to buy up a whole lot of mints. And it was really unfair. Right. And you'd be unhappy if you you were there waiting all day and suddenly it just all got bought up. So um, some of the guys out there, I think it was Jordan uh, as well as Bartosh from Metaplex, put together this uh, system called the Fair Launch Protocol. And the way it works is that it's just a three stage gated process for you to make a bid for a project. So in stage one, everybody puts bids together, right? Um, so how much do you think this NFT is worth? And they'll typically give you a range, you know, uh, some of the projects like Tower and others range between two to three sol. Um, I think People Pleasers was 0 0.5 sol to seven sol. So that was a wide range. And for DJ and Trash Pandas, it was 0 0.1 which is $24 at the time, to 10 sol. So a very, very wide range, right? And so in round one, everybody bids, right? If, if you really think the project's worth one sol, you might bid one sol. If you think that it's really high quality, you might bid eight sol, you know, um, something crazy like that. Now, the second part of it is that once all those bids are collated, you know, and that's a six hour period, you go into this uh, adjustment phase where you are told what the, the ending price is. And the ending price is simply just the median of all the bids, right? Um, and then if your bid was below the median in round two, you have a chance to top it up. If it was above, you have a chance to take your funds out if you wish. And then finally, whoever participates goes into the lottery and will either win or not win a token. So as you can see, there's, it's very gated um, to stop bots from being able to, to constantly spam. There is a entry fee or a bid fee that again will stop bots from being able to spam. Uh, and the coolest thing about it actually, and the main proponent of it is to find out what the community wants to pay for the NFT. And that's mm -hmm. the, the bidding side. And so that's the fair launch protocol explained. But you know, I realized that a lot of people just didn't understand how it worked. Many people had the erroneous belief that if you paid more Sol, you would have a high or bid more sol, you would have a higher chance of actually winning or getting into the lottery when that was not true at all. Um, so, you know, a couple of us worked it out. I wrote a thread to try and help educate people who were looking into it. Uh, and then maybe what I'll do is I'll pause it and hand it over to DJ and service to tell the next part of the story. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, just taking one quick step back, we, this all came about, you know, uh, because of the town hall we had and a lot of us afterwards stuck around just to chat and we started chatting about this fair launch protocol and that this once like a group of us started chatting about it we all came to like these kind of conclusions and realizations that when you start the fair launch protocol in phase one like like satan said many people had the misconception right that if oh if i bid 10 soul i'm good i don't have to worry about phase two Right. Um, but so and then uh, hopping back forward. Uh, Saint, you want to help me out? Oh, hopping. Sorry. To which part? Hopping back <laughs> forward to. Hopping back forward to. Um, oh, yeah. The bid small. Right. Oh, right. The bid small part. OK. So um, the, the misconception, that one was interesting, right? Because it was actually group think that got us to realize that this was the case. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the next thing we knew was that everyone was very excited about this, and we all hung out in uh, our infamous channel called Mint Squad, right? And you can only access this if you have a DGN ape, uh, where a lot of alpha is shared amongst us. And after a while, we realized that, hey, wait a minute, you know, if there's no intrinsic value to like voting higher, right? Well, you might as well just make the lowest bid possible. And in round two, if uh, the actual price is higher, just, just come back and adjust it. Because mm -hmm. then you can still enter the lottery. Um, and so uh, in, that, in that moment, bid small was uh, born, hashtag B-I-D-S-M-O-L, where people were organized to make sure that they bid as, as little as they could, 
So they bid 0 0.1 sol, $24, uh, and see what happened, right? Uh, and the next thing you know, not only were all the apes inside the DGEN ape chat bidding small, but so were others in the DGEN trash uh, chat um, who didn't have access to Mint Squad because, you know, people were sharing information. People were saying, oh, actually, this is how it works. People had read the thread that I wrote. They were like, oh, actually, yeah, this is how it works. So, you know, while some people still bid higher, um, actually, in the end, people ended up bidding really small. They had 11,900 bids at 0 0.1 sol out of the 16,000 bids. So that was almost 72%, <laughs> right? And in the end, it got you. if you were there, if you were participating, you basically had a one in two shot of buying one of these high quality 3D um, NFTs of Trash Pandas, 24 US dollars. <laughs> That's absolutely hilarious. And I had the, uh, the images pulled up on the screen. So the, the Trash Pandas... <laughs> So everybody who was selected, there was how many? What was the total supply that actually got bid on? Was it ninety three hundred or something? Yeah, it was around that. It was the nine thousand number because uh, I think about ten thousand plus were airdropped to to ape holders. And that plus is important. Who was the plus for? It was ten thousand plus seven hundred. Yes, for uh, for exile holders. Exile holders. Yes, as as kind of the Degen Trash Panda team, you know, we're all part of the Degeniverse, and so, you know, this whole thing that happened, uh, we want that they wanted to kind of um, give it as like a token of uh, of uh, good faith, like okay, you know, hey, uh, you know, we know how these things went down, but we, we want to give you guys this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was, that was back at the DAA initial mint. So there was a failed mint at the start um, because it was deployed and there were a lot of errors. So they had to uh, essentially kill off 800 tokens. They didn't at the time. And, you know, there was a little bit of back and forth. And so those uh, people who had uh, those tokens were basically given an additional bunch of, of trash pandas as well. So the, the end up, the supply ended up being quite, quite a bit around close to 20,000 plus 20,000. Mm -hmm. 700 i think because we, we we didn't want you know like a like saying you know like it comes keep it, it keeps coming back to inclusion right and so to give them a chance to you know come back into the into the degeneverse and still be a part of the community do you feel like the reception of that has been good or bad honestly i think you know everyone had their own different set of circumstances if you were an exile holder mm -hmm. and Thankfully, I think for the most part, the reception has been good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of positive vibes coming out of what was a negative situation. So I think that's that's good. I think it's great. And, you know, if, if it can encourage them to come back into the Degeneres and join us, given all the sort of positivity that's out there in the community now um, and all the changes that we've been, ma uh, been making over time, then that's what I, I hope. You know, and I, from what I understand, a couple of their prominent members have, and you know that that really makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, one second. So I think one of the interesting things about this, you guys, is that it minted for point one. You know, we, we we're talking a lot about how there was potential for this to be a very expensive NFT uh, because. A lot of people feel very enthusiastically about the DGN Ape Academy. However, really the original intent of the Trash Panda launch, the entire purpose of this wasn't just an airdrop. It wasn't just uh, a chance for, you know, DAA to grab some more cash, right? It was to grow the entire universe, and that was accomplished by selling these for only $24, what, what are your thoughts about how the fair launch pro protocol actually played out given the chance that there, like it could have gone up to, you know, 10 soul. Yeah, for, for sure. And, you know, I think there was a lot of people in the community that were saying negative things about it. Um, I spoke to many people who said, Hey, this range is suspicious. Why is it 0.1 sol to 10, right? If it prices at 10, that's a cash grab. You know, that means you're going to pay $2,400 per panda and the team is just being greedy, right? And so there was a lot of this FUD, if you will, about the project at the time. And, you know, I think, again, that's why I wrote the thread because 
people didn't quite understand what the FLP was, it is all about your vote. The community decides, and that's the beautiful thing about it, right? If a lot of people vote for the lower end, guess where it's going to price the lower end, right? And so, sorry, sorry, go. So, you know, one thing that I kind of want to like interject here is the reason that people were kind of, I guess, you know, fudding, right? The DJ and Trash Panda launch, it was because of the fundamental misunderstanding of of the circumstances of the phases of the fair launch protocol. It was because, you know, so, so many other fair launch protocols ended in, in, in the, it, right in the middle or to the high end. Yep. But the only reason that was happening is because people didn't have a really, really good understanding of exactly what kind of influence the community can have in the first phase. So I think there's actually a pretty strong argument here. So I think the first thing about this is the entire Solana community who participated in this Mint has now sent a message out to the world that says the fair launch protocol is in fact fair because we set the price by all bidding on the price that we believe it's correct in. The, the community sets that, not the devs, not, you know, someone pulling strings, but, but the people actually set that bid. I think that's the first thing. The second thing is it sends a message to the devs of you need to pick your, your, your price range a little more carefully, maybe. I don't know. What, what do you think? How, I mean, $24 <laughs> times 10K is a $240,000 raise. But I think there was an interesting comment that was out there was don't forget about that 0.2 fee. Where did that, where, what's happening with that 0.2 fee? Does that go to DAA? Yeah. So, you know, for every person that bids, uh, they, they also pay a 0.2 sol fee. And this is again, to stop the bots from sending a lot of bids in. And actually that bid, those bids actually go to charity. So that money that's been set aside, has been earmarked for charity. Uh, and the team, you know, as you said, only raised $240,000, but in actual fact for charity, the launch raised $797,000. So they raised three times more for charity than they did for their own project, right? That, that's pretty amazing in my book. That is amazing. And, you know, I, I got to say, it's very on brand for the DGEN brand. You know, when the apes were minted, it was like a monumental shift in the Solana ecosystem of, you know, of nfts and how they worked and how they launched and then once again now the next dgen launch once again you know kind of shakes this the ecosystem and brings to light some things that you know maybe people didn't uh didn't see beforehand oh yeah i mean it was absolutely on point it was so dgen i mean if you were in the mint squad chat it was going nuts it was going insane people yeah. were like bit small get that 0 0.1 you know, spread the message, you know, we effectively, we memed 0 0.1 into existence, right? Yeah. You guys saw what Wall Street bets did with GameStop and all these meme stocks. Um, this is kind of the future of investing in many, in, in many funny ways, you know, that's how the younger generation invest or the current generation invest. And um, I felt that I felt very proud that, I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily saying 0 0.1 was the right number because I still think that the team do need to raise money and, you know, they need to be rewarded for the area their efforts and the high quality art but the fact that the community could do this and come together not just daa but also linking with others like btp and to get the message out that was truly inspirational and again as as dj service said uh setting a marker which is what uh, daa does yep okay so after a brief intermission where uh google shut down our call um we are back so picking up right where we left off the mint was $24 a pop for, you know, roughly like uh, 9,000, 10,000 supply. They raised 240K. They raised almost 800K for charity. Now, the charity itself, it's not like, oh, the charity of DJ and Apes and it goes back to the money, right? It's, it's an actual charity. Yeah, that's right. So we have a bunch of charities that we are currently voting on, on who to support. Um, and that includes the Children's Heart Foundation, the Habitat for Humanity, uh, Virunga National Park, Ape 
Action Africa, the American Cancer Society, uh, the V Foundation, Victory Over Cancer, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, among a couple of other ones. And I think we're putting it down to a vote now. Uh, and I think the thought is to maybe split it amongst a couple of them. Very cool. Those are all like there's several charities in there uh, that mean a lot to me personally, you know, um, especially, you know, now that I've got kids and seeing things like the Children's Heart Foundation and uh, things like uh, St. Jude mean a lot to me. I also heard, uh, you know, right now I saw when I just looked up the vote, the, the Children's Heart Foundation is in the lead. And not naming names or calling anybody out, but as I understand, there's actually an ape in our community who is in need um, for for that type of assistance. Uh, and it's it's really cool to see the ape community come together to support that particular person and a charity uh, that will you know ultimately be able to benefit people that are at least in a similar situation to him or her. So I think that's really cool and and super kudos there. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, the 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 DGEN Trash Panda token. I, so it's DTPT, if you spell it all out. The cool thing about it is it minted for 0.1. They haven't revealed yet, but the prices of them since then, there's already a secondary market for these DGEN Trash Panda tokens. People can buy them off of Dex Labs. And uh, one of the most extraordinary things about this that I've seen recently is that these tokens are now selling for a significant multiple higher than the mint of 0.1. Yeah, and um, and it was actually the Dijon DAO that started that secondary market. Okay. Well, so uh. it's, it's actually 40 times higher, just to jump in, at its current <laughs> price. <laughs> 40 times higher so uh, i think that actually circles back to the power of fair launch protocol right the market at this point has actually determined that they're worth four but <laughs> fair launch protocol gave people an opportunity to buy it for 0.1 yeah and i think some of that arbitrage happened at the expense of the team so you know i'm obviously not the best result for them but i think they will be rewarded on the secondary market i think you know the it, it's it speaks very strongly to the brand um, and it also answers a lot of the questions people had about fair launch protocol and also the doubts that they had about the team being greedy right this was never about the money this was always about having the right mechanism to let the community decide yeah. right um, and then you know Dijan, you were you were talking about the market being made i think you've got a good story there right about it yeah so you know <laughs> ape holders across the board super excited for the trash pandas yep and we all got um airdrops uh one for one for each of our apes and from the very beginning you know people were already you know starting to say oh um i'll buy any trash panda tokens for for six soul seven soul anybody come on who 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 will give me some right and so there was a lot of like over the counter trading going on of the the of these tokens and we kind of thought like wait i remember um me personally i'm not super technical when it comes to the actual like blockchain mechanics and metadata right but i remembered that um that the tokens that stack in your phantom wallet um can be put on dex labs and so i I got together with some of the uh, some of the other Mint Squad apes, and I started asking questions about you know exactly how this token you know is structured. And then we realized, wait, guys, if we pay four soul, we can we can open up a market for this on Dex Labs. And everyone was like, oh my god, yeah, we can. Are we going to do this? Yeah, let's do this. And yeah. so we opened up this the secondary market. And I, I can't stress how impactful that actually was because I had friends who uh, they're new to NFTs, they're priced out of apes, but they wanted in the Degeniverse. So they went to do the fair launch protocol and they were not as lucky to get selected. So what I did is I went and bought several of these tokens from Dex Labs and just sent them to them because the availability was there. And I want these people in the community. 
So I think, you know, that actually had a bigger impact than just creating a market for apes to trade their tokens. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> inclusion, 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 right? Give everyone a chance. And uh, it, it was awesome that we could do it, you know, through Dex Labs, because not only do we open it up and give everyone a chance, but we make it a little bit easier and, you know, make sure that people don't fall prey to the usual, you know, over-the-counter scams. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was an absolutely like brilliant move. I think across the board, what just happened, people don't actually realize the weight of what just happened. Uh, like across the board, people don't realize that uh, several things, like the fair launch protocol, the co it was actually proven that the community chooses the price in in, a, in the most fair way possible. That was now solidified in the history of the Solana blockchain, the ultimate, uh, you know, I, I don't know what you want to call it, social experiment or whatever. It's now been demonstrated and a precedent has been set for every single fair launch to ever happen again. And it did pretty unfortunately, in my opinion, come at the expense of the dev team. Uh, I will say that, you know, the one or two that I spoke to were really good sports about it. They were honestly kind of laughing and saying, like, good job, you assholes. You memed it into <laughs> existence. Uh, but, like, uh, I think they were they were actually pretty cool with what happened. But now now this precedent has been set throughout the entire Solana ecosystem, yet again by the DGN apes, uh, whether people realize it or not. And the community now realizes, or they should realize, how much power and how truly fair the fair launch protocol is. And now importantly, dev teams will have to give a lot more consideration about the ranges that they want to set the next time they do a fair launch protocol. I think that's actually a really important thing that the devs now have to be very deliberate about setting a range and fairly pricing their tokens. Definitely. I honestly, I, I think it was, it's great that it's all on the blockchain because now that will forever be evidence of how much influence and power a community can have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've already seen one fair launch protocol prices low end higher <laughs> mm -hmm. um, to make sure the team sort of gets it right. So people are much more aware of it now. Um, I, I'm just happy that we were part of the history of it. Right. Even mm -hmm. if it's a small part, it, it was a fun part. And uh, my word, the, the celebrations that happened across the various uh, uh, discords was great. Just yeah. People really loving it. Yeah. I couldn't sleep, man. There was so much adrenaline. I could not sleep for like almost a, a full day. And the, the most gratifying part of all of this was a lot of new people coming in and saying, hey, wow, I love what you guys have done. I can't wait to join the Geniverse and maybe get an ape one day. Right. And, and that's a great thing for the brand and a great thing for both projects under the one umbrella. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, it was I had to mute because I was coughing for a second. Um, and it's it's just phenomenal. Again, I, I can't stress it enough that how much the how much influence the DJ eight project has actually had on the Solana ecosystem in the first two months and uh, kind of bringing the whole conversation full circle just what is on the way, and I'm not going to say it out loud. If you really want to know, you'll you'll have your chance to get in, in soon enough. But just knowing what's on the way through the DAO alone, just what the community is building, the amount of influence it's going to continue to have on the Solana ecosystem. Uh, well, I mean, everybody knows how bullish I am on this project, and this continues to be the reasons why. It, I just I can't get over that word that you use fast. Uh, that's you know that's that's the game of NFTs, right? Everything happens fast around here, and you you can't sit around and lollygag and, and twiddle your thumbs and draw. You could draw on a whiteboard all day, but until you put that that rubber meat in the road, uh, I don't know. I'm getting kind of lost for words. I'm getting flustered because it's, it's so <laughs> it's so yeah. Exciting. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the dev team, again, you know, is, is a smaller amount of people and they're, they're working very hard to deliver value. But now you've got a whole community, thousand plus of apes who are delivering value on this end, mm -hmm. and it's all happening fast. I mean, on how on earth did we do this in eight days? I don't know, right? I keep saying the service. Uh, wow, we took a risk and it kind of paid off. Like, <laughs> my gosh, yeah, like, 100%. It, 
it blew up much faster than than we even could have thought. So you know now we've got uh, community help. We are setting the right infrastructure in place to be able to let people just do what they want. Um, and I think it can only get faster and grow bigger from here. I, I, I'll also say this week in particular, I've seen a large influx of new apes, of first time holders. And I, I just have to believe it's because of how fast things are moving and people, if even if they don't know it, they sense it. They sense the momentum is building, that the dev team is building, that the DAO is building. They sense the impact that the DGEN Trash Panda Fair launch has had on the ecosystem. And they know they want to be a part of it. A hundred percent. And, you know, one thing that, you know, most people don't realize and, you know, take a second to think about is now you have not only the devs working to bring value, but an entire community of apes also separately working towards that same goal. Yeah. You know, because, you know, some projects have, some projects, you know, created a DAO, you know, because they wanted to, you know, kind of take over a little bit more from what the devs were doing. But this is, this isn't that. This is both of us mm -hmm. separately working together towards the same thing. And, you know, like you said, fast 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 imagine how fast things will go when you have a daa dev team who is 100 percent focused on what they need to do because the entire community is taking care of everything else yeah and i think the cool thing about it is when you have just like i was saying earlier when you have this many people committed to a goal uh committed to an organization committed to a brand uh, they don't have to do a lot of work in fact, the amount of work that one individual person has to do is actually quite tiny um, because collectively thousands of people all working to the same goal can accomplish a tremendous amount in a 24 hour period, even with a small amount of stuff, even if it's as small as firing off an email or a Twitter DM or, or a tweet like it. It's phenomenal uh, how the community is really coming together, the vibe uh the growth ever you just it's you know it it's happening and and we feel it <laughs> and it's it's really cool 100 percent, man it's just bringing together people's um skills yeah. right and everyone from a different walk of life has got a different skill you know i hinted towards something in hong kong it's visual um it required work across several different continents and different people's skills, you know, in, in video editing, um, in sourcing the right places to show something um, in the business community, right? And that could not be done very easily uh -huh. with, with most things, but uh, it can be with a global NFT. Yep. Yep. And, and I think that's, again, the, the DAA brand and reach is truly global at this point still remembering that it's only in its like second or barely third month of existence, you know, and, and the amount of impact that it's having, having on the Solana ecosystem around the world. Uh, it's visible. It's real. Nobody debates that this is the blue chip or a blue chip of Solana. Uh, and, and now the community is growing and working. It's, it's actively mobile and, and it's fun. More than anything, it's fun. Uh, and I think that's what's, what's really cool. You know, I love that you said that because that's that's always what it's been about for me. What, what better way to grow a community, you know, when the work that everyone is putting in, they classify it under fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's, it's honestly, like, like I said earlier, it's just where I feel like I can go to hang out and be me. And if I can contribute, you know, something along the way, that's even cooler uh, because I feel so at home that I want more people to come in and feel at home, too. And that's yeah. why I'm like, we I want this. I want this to, to keep growing because I want more people to come have as much fun as I am having right now. That's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, you know, not only is there fun, but I think there's also alpha and utility. Right. So, you know, we mentioned Mint Squad a lot um, and that's to, for upcoming Mints. But we also have a Coinaholics challenge, a channel which talks about, you know, the various uh, cryptocurrencies that are out there. 
the various new protocols like Invictus or Ohm, uh, and people are trading ideas. People are sharing alpha that you know I always found really difficult to find without actually a, a community there. Right. I mean, when I first started my crypto journey, I was mostly alone. Or it might be with a couple of friends I knew in real life. But now we have a thousand apes helping each other mm -hmm. uh, find the right things, tips on, you know, technical advice on like, why can't I claim this token? Or I've just been airdropped this. What is this? Can I sell it? Mm -hmm. You know, should I hold it? You can bounce ideas off people now. Uh, and I think that's the real value of the Degen DAO ape community for now and why people do uh, and should aspire to get an ape. I, I have absolutely taken advantage of all of the things that you've just said. I've absolutely asked like, hey, I don't know what this is or how do I do this? Can somebody send me this link? And and you always get a response within a couple minutes at the most. It's it's really, really cool to have yeah, I mean, just that resource. Uh, uh and the next stage is, you know, uh, the trash banners will have their own uh, group that does this as well. Um, and hopefully we'll find a way to to get them in, um, though it will be up to the community at the end of the day. Uh, and then if that happens, we've got a cross pollination chat where all of this can come together. Right. So to me, that's super exciting um, okay. because the power of inclusion is very strong. I think I'm also going to have to work on figuring out how I can dress up as my trash panda. <laughs> uh, in spandex outfits and go out grocery shopping. I again, like I haven't done anything like that since college, and and that's that was a long time ago. That's that's how fun this is and how free I feel. Um, that's how inspired I am. Uh, that's very DJ. This... Yes, it's very DJ. Uh, uh, that's that's just that's the impact that this community is having on me. And I'll tell you, like on a personal level, uh, that was. It was nice for me to put down work and all of the things that stress me out in my life for a day and just go be wild and have fun. That like and that's that's what this community has done for me and that's why I feel so strongly that it's different from anything else I've experienced and that's why I'm so bullish on it. Perfect. Now Sorry. I'm even more refreshed and inspired to continue. <laughs> <laughs> we should do one of these every week like you know a pep talk from Knox, and uh you know we'll be the biggest nft in the next uh yeah <laughs> i think we're <laughs> headed there without the pep talk anyways <laughs> <laughs> all right well i mean that's the three things that i wanted to talk about today um again i can't thank you guys enough for your time and all of the work that you're putting into this community into this project into this dow it is paying off uh, I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of sleepless nights. Um, but you you just know where we're going to be in 12 months, right? You just know it. And uh, again, just kudos to y'all. Um, you know, we, we salute you. We owe you. You are amazing. And uh, keep up everything that you're doing. For real. Thank you. And, you know, thank you, Knox, for giving us a platform to share what we love um, and also for being a, a very active community member, because yeah. that's what really makes it. Yeah, let's let's keep growing that family and getting more active people in. All right. So at that point, we are going to sign off here uh, for all of you who are watching and made it to the very end. Thank you guys so much. If you like this type of content, please make sure to hit that like or subscribe button below it is free to click you won't even get a push notification unless you want it uh, and it means the world to me when you do so thanks again for stopping by we'll see you in the next one